Hey guys, I am reaching out to you all because I need some help finishing up a recording that I started in February 20 of 22. Here's the gist. Back in 2010, I went on sabbatical from Psyopis. I was overworked and honestly, I was no longer inspired by the mission statement of the band. I still remember the night that I decided I was going to reinvent myself. Psyopis was playing a show in Connecticut. I had realized that I hadn't been listening to metal in so long and I wanted to start expressing myself in a different inventive way. I got manically excited and I decided to change course. From this point, I will start to share the musical journey to creating this album. I used to refer to this project unofficially as the Tulu Konagaya Project. It was my Latin, jazz fusion, effeminate coffee shop, rock, avant-garde, top 40 club music band. As that description suggests, it was inspired by Latin rhythms, my affection for top 40 club music, world musics, the avant-garde, female vocalists, and other vocal heroes of mine such as Jeff Buckley, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, etc. I did want to be sensitive to not just be imitating all of these ideas. What I wanted to do was saturate myself in the art while trying to develop my own unique musical statement. A unique statement like Psyopus had in the mathcore grind scene. I knew this was going to take time to develop and I was at square one. I was putting together a band consisting of acoustic guitar, electric guitar, bass guitar, percussionist, set drums, all while I intended to be singing. Putting that together is a story of failure in of itself, but what did come of it is I developed a relationship with a multi-instrumentalist aspiring to be a sound engineer named Ike Schultz. Over the years, as Ike worked his way up the sound engineer ladder, he was persistently encouraging me to finish up this project, then come to LA and record it with him. On my end, it authentically was an attitude, I will do it someday when I am ready. This all while I'm tinkering, trying to find out exactly what the sound is going to be. Furthermore, allowing the maturation of this reinventing of myself to fully bloom. I was aware that I had to keep in mind though, the road of someday leads to a town of nowhere. Fast forward to Christmas of 2020. Ike had called me while I was shopping at Wegmans, a grocery store well established in the infrastructure of Rochester, New York. It got me excited and inspired to finally commit to finding a time where I was going to go visit him and record this album. I was going to visit, spend a month there, and be a winner. I was giving myself a year to turn off everything in my peripheral vision and just focus on writing the best album I can with this mystery style of sound that I'm trying to create. Come December of 2021, I was to fly to LA and get this done. Time to flesh out our ideas into reality. Time passed, I focused, December 2021 turned into February 2022. In the spring of 2021, I booked tickets to actually go there. Things just got real. Things just got fucking serious. So now I want to tell you about what the album has in store for you. There's more details that I'm really excited about expressing than I can actually handle trying to express. So to traverse that obstacle, I'm going to share with you the all-encompassing philosophical mission statement of the Tulu Project. The question is this, what is expression? How many ways can I connect with other people through music? How many ways can I provoke an emotional response in a listener? What I did then was search out every abstraction of expression I could find with the hopes to have them all culminate into what I am hoping to be an ever memorable and visceral album. What did this search look like? Over the years, I have built the single most exciting personal library of eclectic music theory books this side of the equator. I am dead serious. My library is fucking awesome. I bring it up on first dates. I bring it up on first dates. I bring it up on first dates. I meticulously studied and studied, wrote and wrote, studied and studied, wrote and wrote. I learned about creating expectations in the listener and then deviating from those expectations. I learned that tension and release can be applied to anything. I proficiently studied the art of composition, melody, harmony, modulation, and dynamics. I studied pop, classical, the avant-garde. I studied music psychology. I learned the addiction formula and how it applied to music. I studied as many techniques, expressions, or embellishments that I could find for not only the guitar and voice, but for every other world instrument I could uncover. I studied so much world music you wouldn't believe it. And with that, let me say this. Music is not the universal language. 
There are so many different relationships different cultures have with sound relative to the relationship that those with Western European sensibilities have with sound. I research music from the East Pacific, flamenco from Andalusia, gypsy music from the Baltic area to Russian gypsy music. I hate Irish music all around so I stayed away from Irish gypsy music. I study tango music that comes from Buenos Aires. I study northern and southern Indian art music. I drown myself in Middle Eastern music, Egyptian folk music, and in all Latin South American music that I could find. There really is so much more. I read so many biographies on my heroes and music. I spent over $1,500 in vocal studies alone. I studied blues vocalists. I studied gospel vocalists. I studied under Ken Tamplin. I studied under Justin Stoney. I read through endless supplies of books on percussion, consisting of different rhythms, breakbeats, funk, odd timing, Brazilian, African, doom tech, tablas, etc., and a variety of books that just cover things like drum fills. I bought prog theory books. I bought jazz theory books. I purchased books that you would never even knew existed if I didn't show them to you. I searched all over the internet passionately. I ordered every single thing that I wanted on Amazon, and I ordered internationally. And as far as lyrics go, I studied so many tricks and philosophies behind poetry. I own the best thesauruses and rhyming dictionaries around. I proficiently read up on the creative process and viewed every documentary on famous artists. I consulted with every spirit who had a deep relationship with their art that I could find. I had a college professor friend who specializes in poetry and creative writing, who I had close during the more intensive times of lyrical writing. I started seeing my old college professor for music theory online once a week. I read every copy of American Songwriter I had sent to my place from cover to cover. And with every book I read, I prolifically highlighted every page. I meticulously filled up composition notebooks with music concepts, artistic direction, and I have a lifetime of passion for psychology and self-help, resulting in an invested understanding of human nature. I really swear that this list can go on and on, but my point is this. I was not fucking around. I worked diligently in 2021, playing my guitar, spending hours doing vocal training, composing, Scrapping material, making my laptop smoke by abusing it with Guitar Pro. Come October, I stopped working as a server. I was now unemployed. At this point, I worked night and day preparing for this album that I was going to start recording in February. I could spend an entire night thinking two lines of lyrics. I was being a perfectionist to the best of my ability, just like I did with Psyopus during the 2000s. And now I can confidently say that this is probably some of the best material I've ever created in my entire life. I cannot be prouder of myself. I'm happy that this project didn't show up 10 years ago. It was not ready, and I was not ready. Now I can say that within my own realm of abstract thinking, I have created new, unique, theoretical concepts that align with the direction that I have been trying to go. This is very exciting to me. This is why I'm happy we took so much time to get this done. This is going to better accentuate the unique expression that this project is aiming for. At this point, I'm hoping that you can viscerally, intuitively, kind of get a sense of where I'm going with this album. One thing I do want to point out is that this is not, I repeat, not a world music album. The concepts are far more esimplastic and nuanced than some generic sound that you'd get from hearing Paul Simon covering an African tune while Peter Gabriel is covering some Latin song. I mean, I love to my Pitbull in Miami. I really believe that this is going to be a very unique album in the making. So I flew to LA in February of 2022. At this time, Ike is in full swing as a sound engineering mastering proficionado at his uh, personal studio. He's credited with sound engineering on a Grammy-winning album. He's worked with so many who's who's in the industry, it's, it's beyond impressive. If you have a moment, look up Ike Schultz, find his website, look at his resume, and go, fuck, this dude's doing all right. When we're in Hollywood, we maneuver through his professional schedule with working on the album, him teaching me more about sound engineering than I have ever learned over the last 30 plus years I've been playing guitar, and we went through the entire Neon Genesis anime series. Now here is where I'm going to start explaining to you the help that I need from you guys. We have nine songs structured and in the process of being fleshed out into reality. Up until now, generally speaking, I've been the compositional engineer 
and Ike has been the sound engineer extraordinaire in what is a joint effort to make the best album we can. Again, I have nine whole songs laid out in Pro Tools right now. To help create the illusion of a more tangible concept, I'll give you the names of the nine songs so they're not just anonymous songs. That Was So Fun, Hey E, I Do I, Ink Blots and Cloudscapes, Casper, Molly Drone, Exhale, Don't Call Her, My Call Lays Beautiful, and Motel Curtain. They cover a wide variety of topics, but a lot of them stem from different aspects of interpersonal relationships. I tell you all this because I know so many of you who have reached out to me over the years sharing their enthusiastic interest in whether or not I will ever release any new material. Well, this is where we're at. I actually wrote some songs, and I am trying to release them now. Going into the studio, the goal was to have as much written as possible and trust the tricks of the recording trade to start putting it together. We worked hard and spent as much time as we could afford to get as much done as we could, but unfortunately, I left with nothing being completed. I had wrote a lot of material, so that was one thing, and that takes time. Plus, Ike doesn't fuck around when it comes to sound engineering, and that takes time. It all takes a lot of time. But remember again, the dude's a goddamn genius. Take that literally. The chords in the chorus of one of the songs we did sounded more beautiful than anything I have ever heard recorded before. I am not exaggerating. But I digress. Here is our problem. We need to invest so much more meticulous time to continue towards completion. Ike is so slammed with professional work right now that he can't see us being able to work on anything for this album until 2023. We have so much meticulous work that needs to be done. But the good news is it is work that I can do if I have the right resources. I am starting up this GoFundMe account in hopes that you'll be able to help me purchase the, both the computer and the interface I desired for this project. So I can work through so much of this meticulous editing that Ike has no time for so when 2023 comes along he can just do his rocket science sound masters mixing love stuff. I have plenty of work that I can do from now till 2023. I'm aiming for the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's going for about $1,100 on Sweetwater right now. For interface, we want to use a used Apogee Duet 2, I believe. You can get that on eBay right now for $200, $250. We're up to 1350 at this point. I have both visual and audio monitors. I have microphones, but beyond that, there might still be some loose ends that need attention. Mic stands, special cables, who knows what. And certainly I'm predicting that I'm going to want to be able to purchase a, a few unique plugins to finish this vision. I'm figuring $1,600 should be a safe amount to be able to cover all of those bases to make sure that I can get what needs to be done done. We are doing this independently and all of our resources have been put into the creative process at this point. Again, I didn't work for six months just trying to make sure I got this down. Your financial support can really help save this project. If I can put together this home recording studio, the rewards would be great. We already recorded what could be considered all of the guitars. We have an adequate amount of vocal performances. We worked through some percussion issues and some bass issues, but seriously there is still so much editing and detail work to be done to create the vision that we have and that you as a fan deserve to hear. I will be able to patiently work on these musical details that Ike does not have the time for. I will be able to streamline attention into new vocal performances and nuance that I was just not prepared to do while I was in Hollywood. There is plenty of post-production, augmenting and editing that I can do until Ike and I finally find our time for this project. A project that we have been creating, stewing, philosophizing about, projecting for over 10 years together. Where are this? Close. So when he does have the time, he doesn't have to do all this meticulous bullshit and he can just focus on doing what he's, his bread and butter is. Editing and, and beautiful. Just beautiful. Also, once I do have this all set up, it will make it easier for Ike and I to continue working in this vein on this project in the future. Especially if we have the spiritual encouragement of you guys saying, hey, we actually dug it. I see this project becoming far more sophisticated. So that's it. I'm very, very grateful that you cared enough to make it this far in the video. I care so much about this project. 
And I really hope that sooner than later, we get to share this vision with you that has been developing so much in my mind over the last 10 years while I haven't been writing Psyopus or metal material. If you can help, my gratitude would be bottomless.